KU fans of custom car culture of the 20th century where I'm gonna take you I'm gonna take you to the original shop of George and Sam Barras right here in Linwood California where you can almost say or pretty much where custom car culture started in the 20th century right here in Atlantic Boulevard we zoom in we're a little bit south of the original shop but we're lucky because the shop is still extant it's a little bit changed even though there was a fire in 1957 it burned the shop on the interior but it didn't burn all down Sam and George they were here for 10 years during the 1950s from 1949 to 1951 and as you saw in that photo that I zoomed in on Elvis came here in 1960 James Dean came the Monday before he died to get little bastard painted Sam and uh, George they were uh, born in Chicago their mother died when they were four years when, when uh, George was four when Sam was five they came to live with their uh, uncle and aunt uh, their parents their parents were named uh, James and uh, Fanachia Salapatis but they came when the mother died the father sent George and Sam out west to a suburb in Sacramento California I think about 1928 and they came to live with their aunt and uncle John and Edith Barakaris here we are 11054 where the birthplace of custom car culture started right here gestated and was born and it started a craze that has never stopped so there's some guard dogs are really mean so I'm gonna be quiet cuz I don't want them to come out and raise a ruckus okay suspend your disbelief imagine James Dean here September 26th to have J uh, Dean Jeffries pinstripe little bastard and here's a little bastard right here a tough little bastard ain't ya and here it is now on that little roof there that mansard roof, roof uh, behind that there's a little pony wall where uh, a young Von Dutch Kenny Howard painted Barris custom shop this is where uh, Dean Jeffries Von Dutch the famous pinstripers the pinstriping craze started right here and people from all over the world they came to get their cars modified because when George and Sam moved here in 1949 they had already had three shops all over this place Bow, in Bell, Bellflower, Paramount, Cudahy, Maywood, Southgate, Paramount all, the, all this whole area was pretty much uh, there was just tons and tons of accessory shops here in this part of uh, LA County uh, this is where Big Daddy Roth started in Maywood uh, you had uh, for whatever reason like a, like a national zeitgeist it all started right here at 11054 Atlantic Boulevard and uh, if you're at all curious James Dean when he came to have uh, Dean Jeffries pinstripe his little bastard his 550 spider he would have come down Sepulveda Boulevard it was 31 miles from Sherman Oaks so at that time period there was no Santa Ana freeway and the I'm just guessing because what with him having just gotten the uh, the spider he had to have brake and mileage on the 550 spider he had to have 1500 miles to race that Friday September 30th or rather he was gonna he was gonna race the next day on the Saturday I guess that would have been uh, October 1st okay he he would have come south on Sepulveda he would have made a he would have made a, a left on Imperial and then he would have made a hard right right here in Atlantic and then he would have pulled in there was no median 
and uh, these shops are thankfully they're extant there's a bunch of photos if you want to go and you want to bring it up on the images in Google you can see pretty much this area is uh, it's all it's, it hasn't really changed much thankfully it st still is a place where they do cars and right here if you see old photos this shop right next to it that was uh, like a, a garage back there and there was a f fire here where uh, George lost 15 cars in 1957 and then he rebuilt this place right here he bumped out the garage and he turned it into an accessory shop and if and a lot of old photos that right there that old-fashioned building that was a dog and cat hospital uh, Von, Von Dutch, he was, uh, his name was Kenny Howard. He was brought up here in Compton and Linwood. James Coburn. Of course, the Beach Boys were brought up not too far from here. For whatever reason, custom car culture started here in this area, but more so in this spot. Like I said, this was ground zero. Now, that shot I took of, of Sam Barris, he was the first guy on record that cut chopped channeled section a 49 Merc and uh, George he had a hobby of photography so what he would do they befriended a guy a famous guy a publisher named Robert E Peterson George would take pictures of all the cars and uh, of course Robert Peterson he, he's the one he died actually in 2007 he's the one that has the uh, he left the famous Peterson Automotive Museum in LA and Wilshire but in order for him to sell his magazines Car Craft, Hot Rod, Motor Trend, Rod and Custom George would give him all the photos that he'd take of all the cars he modified right here and in a lot of pictures you see that apartment complex that's still there thankfully everything's extant well what he would do George he would take pictures and what he did was he took a photo of Sam's brand new 49 modified flathead V8 Mercury and uh, he put yeah and he gave it to Robert Peterson the whole world saw that and it completely it, it created a revolution in custom car modifications and uh, to this day the most sought after custom car is a 49, a 50, and a 51 Mercury flathead V8. After that, they stopped with that style. Now, the reason why that was such a big deal when it came out, because it was the first car that came out without uh, running boards. That was the first, uh, the 49 Merc, that was the first uh, Mercury that came out after the war, had ended four years later. And it came out with a style called Ponton Design. A wraparound, enveloped kind of body that nobody had ever seen before. A streamlined look. And uh, that, that style of modified uh, Mercury. Now I'm, I'm wondering if James Dean, I'm wondering if he uh, hadn't seen Sam's uh, 49 Merc. And I'm wondering if he's the one that asked to have a 49 Merc and Rebel Without a Cause. But he did come here, James Dean, that Monday, September 26th. Now getting back to Von Dutch, Kenny Howard. They said he was an eccentric. If somebody pissed him off when he was pinstriping their car, they said that he would uh, put grease in the paint. And by the time they got home, all their paint had ruined the... Uh, the, all the pinstriping had leaked all over the car <laughs> and he had a temper he was he they said he's kind of weird so they ended up firing him but he was brought up here and the way George met Von Dutch is uh he worked in a motorcycle shop I guess doing pinstriping a total genius self-taught his father was actually a, a sign painter well he ended up, uh, George and Sam got pissed off, they fired him, but then, lo and behold, like I said, 
what with custom car culture starting here and all those geniuses behind it all, he met a young uh, Dean Jeffries, another genius, self-taught, pinstriper, and he hired uh, Dean Jeffries. Now, Dean, Dean said, oh no, I'm not gonna work for you, George, but I will wor work adjacent. I'll rent one of these little uh, garages next to you. At that time, it was uh, longitudinal all the way to the alley. And, I, and Dean Jeffries, he rented one of the, uh, the slots there. And of course, it was a symbiotic relationship because George says, okay, if somebody's coming in to get their car pinstriped, I'm gonna get the overflow and maybe somebody's gonna want their car customized. This is where George Barris designed and built the a la carte. And uh, when he moved in 1961 to Riverside Drive, at, and that, that, when they moved over there, they called it Barrett, Barris Custom City. That's where they built and designed the uh, Batmo Batmobile. And of course, Dean Jeffries went on to greater fame, great, just as much great fame. He built the, uh, he built the Green Hornet, Black Beauty. Uh, he built the famous Manta Ray. And then if you're aware of uh, the icon, the famous icon in the 1960s, Rat Fink, uh, that was that was uh, that was an artistic invention by Big Daddy Roth, and I've already in my channel, I've already gone to Big Daddy Roth, Roth shop on Slauson, so you can go check that out if you're curious. But organically, for whatever reason, custom car culture started right here. James Coburn, like I said, he was brought up here. I actually even lived here in 1964 about a half mile that way south and uh, this is where it all started ground zero the first chopped 49 Merc they chop your car they channel it they'd section it they'd French it they'd shave it a la Jesse James now and the double lots that show that used they used to have of course Keanu Reeves he modifies his motorcycles he's even got a shop uh, Billy Bob Thornton, those are the kind of guys that still keep that style of the 1950s custom car culture. It's not only a culture dealing with the cars, it's also the clothes and the music. So, uh, this is where it all happened right here. Thankfully, it's still extant. And like I said, when there was a fire here in 1957, uh, George, he lost 15 cars. He, uh, Jane Mansfield, Mansfield's Jaguar, he was working on that. Uh, he had, Joseph Gabor was a customer, George Raft, the band leader, Lionel Hampton. Anyway, he built this bump out right here. And this was an accessory shop where he sold parts. I guess probably even after they moved to uh, Burbank and that in the old pictures you can see that that was a dog and cat hospital right here and uh i'm just glad that everything's extant you see you can see photos of uh the whites posing in front of the mercs and you can see those shops right there they're a little bit changed and uh there's a hamburger stand over there and uh you can see that you can see sam in front of us uh 49 Merc. Well, that hamburger stand, that's it's over there. So uh, if you come, you can still see that stand.